Speaking of now, we're almost there to Augusta. Scotty Scheffler, the overwhelming betting favorite at the Masters, currently priced at plus 460, the only golfer in the field short of 10 to 1. He's got two wins and a T2 in his last three starts on tour, which, guys, coincides with a switch to a mallet putter on the greens. Scheffler, the biggest favorite at the Masters since Tiger in 2013. No one outside of Tiger Woods has been a shorter favorite at any major. Since Nick Faldo at the 1990 PGA Championship 34 years ago. That's how well Scotty is playing. That's how he's being priced at the moment. Joe, can you blame anyone for taking that price on Scheffler? My wife can tell me what to do with my money. I'm not going to sit here and tell anyone else what to do with That's their money. That's quite literally your job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. To advise people. Um, <laughs> You know, not to nerd out, but that's normally what we do here. This all comes down to the conversion rate, right? Like you take the plus 460, you convert it, you get 17.8%. So you ask yourself, does Scheffler have a better than, less than, or equal to 17.8% chance of winning this thing? I personally think no. I think it's less than that. Right. I wouldn't make the bet, but I understand why people would. I mean, it's a stack field. You have every golfer in the world who gets to play in this gearing up for this event. It's not like they overlook it. They're preparing for it. He started here four times. He's finished better than 10th one time. It's an incredible resume that he's got, and it's an incredible resume that he has here on this course, but it's not like he wins every time he plays. You got guys like John Rahm in the field. He doesn't face John Rahm on a regular basis anymore. So, no, I wouldn't play it, but I don't understand. Or I don't have a problem with anyone who does, obviously. Yep, can't fault anybody that would want to bet this. And also a reminder, I mean, we just finished the – college hoop season. Mm -hmm. UConn was the favorite of plus 380. They went on to win it. Then you got South Carolina. They were minus 140 heading into the tournament. So just because it's at plus 460 yeah. doesn't mean it's not likely to happen. It's still a good price technically. Like when you look at golf in general, you're thinking of these long shots, 25 to 1 or longer, things like that. So I can see why on paper you'd be like, oh, I'm just staying away from that. But the public absolutely loves it. I'll give you one other person who loves Scotty Scheffler. He picked him on .com, Andy North. Going with Scotty Scheffler, who I agree with you, Joe. I'm not going to play it, but Andy North was right last time we said. Has, has North ever expensive. stepped outside <laughs> of the Scheffler selection? He's right Why when he does he? it. A two wins and a T2 his last three starts. It's paying off, even at these um, depressed prices. Aaron, going back to you, as far as Scheffler is concerned, are there any props out there regarding the world number one you would play? So if you wanted to play top five, top 10, top 15, all those types of markets, I couldn't fault you for taking him to finish in the top five. Maybe yeah. he gets there but doesn't actually end up winning it. I mean, he's finished top 10 in his last six Masters starts, so he's been right there at times. Again, you can bet these in multiple different ways. He is looking for a second green jacket, but just knowing overall he's one of the most bet on players to go in and win it. Obviously, people think that he's going to be successful. It's just by a matter of how much if he's not going to win it. So I would look for him to finish in the top five. All right, Joe, like a lot of golf gamblers, we tend to veer further down the odds yeah. board when we're playing outright winners. So who you got your eye on? One thing to note on Scheffler is a PSA. You can make bets where all the guys have odds to win without Scheffler. Like they remove him from the equation so you can bet these guys with Scheffler out of the equation if you're that worried that like you know something could end up happening so to answer your original question first guy I would look at is Victor Hovland now ESPN bet has him at 22 to 1 not necessarily a price I'd get involved in there but he's 40 to 1 elsewhere on the market that's where I'm buying all right we're buying low on Victor Hovland rough season which is why he's got the longer odds but he's made the cut in all five starts this year he hasn't been a disaster he's four for four in cuts made and four starts at Augusta finished seventh here last season this is a guy who's ready to break through at some point so keep your eye on him Russell Henley is another name he's sitting out there at 60 to one undervalued in almost every start he's made this season fourth at the Valero last week he was fourth at the Sony in January he was fourth at I believe the Arnold Palmer in March. He's been steady all season long. A breakthrough is coming on that front as well, in my opinion. All right, Hovland and Henley from Fortinbaugh. Aaron, anyone in the outright market you're looking at? Not necessarily in the outright market, but I am looking at Matsuyama okay. to finish in the top 10. Uh, you get that a plus 185. I'm one of these people that, you know, men love to golf. So I asked some of my <laughs> friends that love to golf every weekend who they're looking at, and they actually liked them liked Hideki Matsuyama to win outright, but I'm just looking in the top 10 market. He won in back in 2021, so we know he has the experience. He also finished in the top 20 in eight of his last 10 appearances. So again, he's been there. He has momentum heading into this tournament as well as just, again, the experience, the confidence. Confidence is key as well. Rather than taking somebody outright because that feels impossible <laughs> to win, I'm just looking at these other markets, so I'll take him top 10. He, he is outstanding on this course, and he's having a tremendous yeah. season as well. He's in phenomenal form, and his price is coming down probably because 
people like your friends are getting involved in Matsuyama now 18 to 1 and he opened I think around 22 25 to 1 in this tournament uh all right I'm gonna do it pull the trigger on Roy McIlroy this week he's 11 to 1 and I'm gonna ask later in the show the caddy Michael Collins if I'm crazy thinking this is finally the year that Rory breaks through at Augusta ending a massive major drought that's going on a decade to complete the career grand slam but I just feel if not now when for a guy who's been close many times. Dustin Johnson, I also gave out on SportsCenter yesterday at 40 to 1. I think that's great value for a guy who won it just four years ago. The only concern with McElroy for me is I think it's two in yeah. his head. Oh, I mean, he comes oh, in and he starts slow. He's missed the cut two of the last three here. And it feels like these early rounds is where he struggles. Mm -hmm. And then he surges up the yep. board late. And you're like, hey, look, Roy had a top five. But he was never really in it. He just closed the gap, kind of like what we call garbage time. Mm -hmm. Although, very disrespectful to a golfer playing at Augusta. That's not really what I meant. But I got the point across so you know where I'm going. That's backdoor yeah. roars. That's the name he has yeah. for sneaking in the back door of a top ten, top yeah. five with a crazy Sunday. Although he wasn't really in contention before a great final round. All right. Tiger Woods has made the cut at every Masters he has played since turning professional. That streak of 23 straight May cuts tied with Freddie Couples and Gary Player for the longest all time. Tiger this year, minus 110 to make it to the weekend at ESPN Bet. He's minus 125 to miss the cut. All right, back with Aaron and Joe. Aaron, I'll start with you. Is Tiger going to make the cut, yes or no? I'll say he'll make the cut. I know this is just the question everybody's go. grappling with. I see it all over social media. No one really thinks he's going to be able to win it outright. But in terms of this, yes, I'll say he makes the cut. Who? He knows this course so well. No matter what's going on with him, I know that you know he's been withdrawing from tournaments, things of that nature, obviously based on age, injuries, different things that have happened over the last couple of years. That makes sense, but I'm not asking him to go on and win it. Of course, I'm talking over this ter terrible putt that he's making here. Um, <laughs> but I do think I'll be able to make the cut. I'm not going to bet against him to miss it. I'd go the other way. Mm. Um, of course you will. You've gone contrarian mm. on everything lately, no matter what. Well, the thing Anything is. Anything excitable, you go the contrary <laughs> on. Okay, help me with but this. But I understand. Guy. I what's, understand why, but. What's the ceiling for Woods, right? Like you mentioned earlier, you like Hideki Matsuyama in the top 10. Mm -hmm. I like that bet a lot. I also think Thank he could go. win the event. Yep. So the idea that he's won the event, could win the event, we're betting him top 10, that's a high ceiling. What's Woods' ceiling? We've seen him six times since 2022. He's had three withdrawals, he's had one miscut. And he's had two top 40s, or two two events where he hasn't finished in the top 40. He hasn't had a top 40 in any of those six events is what I'm getting at. So what's the ceiling here? Now you change the rules, it's top 50 plus ties, no longer within 10 shots of the lead. And then you got the weather concern. Now some people are gonna say, well, he's teeing off at 1.30, the weather's supposed to be done by noon. That's the problem. If everyone in the morning gets washed out and they push the tee times back, and Tiger doesn't complete his round on Thursday, he's playing more than 18 on Friday. That's an old body with a lot of surgeries that's going to be asked to play more than 18 holes in very cool weather, which doesn't add up to warming up. So I'm, I'm thinking, playing the mess. I'm thinking Tiger Woods. I'm thinking the word Masters. It just, you don't bet it. I can understand that. There's a lot. I mean, he given everything he's done. in my in home studio. Remember the, the picture behind me? <laughs> this was the same conversation we had in 2022 coming yeah. off the 2021 car wreck. I mean, come on. There's no way he can do that. He went out and made the cut. And to the, this matters to him, I think, to break that record. I agree with you, Aaron. Joe's being a contrarian over there. Get out of here, Joe. Come on. All right, I, all right. this one may be more fun. Uh, Tiger versus Phil Mickelson. First round prop, okay? You can have Tiger or Lefty. I'm going to take Lefty here. Now, I just said Tiger's going to make the cut, but... This I is think, interesting. Okay. After that big speech. Both can make the cut there. I think Tiger in round one is... Looking at a 70 to 72 type score. Phil, as you mentioned, has the much higher ceiling. He just finished second at Augusta last year with a final round 65, I believe it was. Haven't seen him play golf at Liv, who has, but I assume he's in better shape physically than Tiger Woods at this point. So these two go in, in their careers. Lefty has 10 top three finishes at Augusta, including 10 top threes at Augusta, including last year. Tiger only has eight. So in this market, I will take Lefty. I think they're both playing on the weekend, though. Uh, the thing with Mickelson is the last couple years, there's been a lot surrounding him that hasn't been yes, good. Right. And it feels like this year he's coming in and people are like, oh, I forgot about Phil. Yeah. I forgot Phil's playing. Loose mindset is kind of what you need coming into this. You're not going to have the media all over you. It was a couple years ago he didn't even play in this. He had so much drama around him. So I think coming in with a clear mind, understanding he's probably not going to win. So just relax, have some fun while you're out there. It's a good bet. Good bet. Minus 105 on lefty, minus 120 for Woods. First round only. That's... 
where that will be graded there. All right, uh, Joe, Rory, and Rom. those are the yeah. two golfers with the shortest odds outside of Scotty Scheffler. Why is Romer your preferred play? So he's minus 110. Rory's minus 115. I think they should flip that, oh. right? This is competitive, but I think Rom should be the favorite. So that's why I'm going to make the play here. One last year, you can say, oh, you know, recency bias. All right, fine. Let's look at the last, oh, I don't know, six years where he's finished in the top 10 five times. He's as consistent as they come out here. And again, won it last year. He's in the prime of his career. We talked about this earlier with Rory. I'm sure he'll play great some of the time. But he puts so much pressure on himself in this event because he wants to win it so yeah. badly. I mean, he's missed the cut two of the last three years. Yeah. We're talking about old bag of bones, Tiger Woods <laughs> making the cut. Rory in his prime has missed it two of the last three years. So the mental space, where is he? He's coming off a great weekend. Everyone's talking about mm -hmm. how great he looks now. This is where he starts overthinking it. Can't wait to hear what the caddy has to say about Rory because great points. He has struggled recently at Augusta. Aaron, wrap us up here. A player that you think is worth a wager to make the top 10. Well, look at Wyndham Clark, top 10, plus 280. He's been on a great run recently, especially, you know, he's the reigning U.S. Open champ, and he's just been getting these wins, and he has momentum coming into this. And I just think even though he hasn't played in the Masters ever, it feels like one of those spots in which it's one of these young guys that's coming up. Maybe he's able to finish in the top 10. Again, I'm looking at those markets as opposed to just winning outright. Yeah, I know that narrative, you know, first time, going to struggle, but U.S. Open champ shot a 60 at Pebble Beach earlier this year. Outside of Scotty Scheffler, this might be the best golfer on the tour right now. Mentally, he's in a great space. Yeah. There have been a lot of opportunities post that major win where mm -hmm. everyone's looked at him and said he's overvalued, and he just keeps playing well. Like, he's been bucking that at every single turn. America's caddy this week on ESPN Bet Live. He is in Augusta, Georgia, getting us ready for the 88th edition of the Masters. Figuring out how we want to bet before everything tees off on Thursday morning. And the guy, of course, caddy, no surprise, who is the betting favorite in almost a Tiger-like fashion is Scotty Scheffler, the world number one. It's almost at this point where do I want to bet on him even though he's a great golfer? It's just not a great return on investment. So how are you approaching Scheffler here? Is he someone you would bet at his price or maybe stay away from? He is hitting those numbers that we haven't seen since Tiger Woods when it comes to betting numbers. Here's the problem. Do you like winning money or do you not like winning money, right? Because even at just under five to one, if you bet Scotty Scheffler, you would still be winning money. And the last time I checked, if I give you a dollar and you give me five back, I made some cash. Right. It might not be, I made hundreds or enough for a car payment or a house payment, but I still leave with more than I came with. And that's part of the problem with Scotty Scheffler right now for gamblers. And that is, we finally got another guy playing golf on tour who can win with his B game. And that's a very scary proposition because we've seen Scotty Scheffler do it. And oh yeah, he's got a green jacket in his closet, so he's got experience around this place. Are you sitting down? Uh, I'll put the seatbelt on because I think you're about to give me something crazy here, Caddy. Listen, I'm just, I'm recollecting of how many conversations we've had at, at the Masters talking about Roy McIlroy when I said he has baggage, stay away from him, right? He's the king of the backdoor top five mm -hmm. because that's what he's done because of the baggage he's had. I believe this year, finally, that baggage is gone. Oh. <laughs> I think in the conversation that he had with Butch Harmon, but more importantly, the conversation he had with his daughter before he left. I talked to Rory at Arnold Palmer after now that he has shed all this PGA Tour duties with that live stuff, everything that's going on, he's let all of that go. You know what he's doing? He's having fun on the golf course. And he's trying to play a lot of golf. Now, right before he went to see Butch Harmon, his daughter said, Papa, where are you going? He said, I'm going out for a golf lesson to see my friend. And she looked at him and she goes, but Dada, you already know how to play golf. <laughs> and it, it was like for him, it was like a slap in the face, a giggle slap, like, uh, you know what? I do know how to play golf. I can just play golf. And I think that moment for him from Poppy is the moment where he shed the last of the baggage that he had from the bad experience he had the last time he had a legit chance to win here. And I think Rory could walk away with that green jacket and completing the career grand slam. Wow, what a Sunday that would give if it is a Rory Shuffler down the stretch duel at Augusta. Caddy, I'm lucky I put my seatbelt on because I wasn't expecting that. You blew me away. So it sounds like you think he's a contender. 
But of course, this is a betting yep. show and we love long shots. So anyone in the field who could give that nice return on investment. And somebody who I told you about on Tuesday's show, and that's a live guy, right? Mm -hmm. Who has come back into form and is going into this week at triple digits. Here we go. Sergio Garcia. Yeah, go. Sergio Garcia. And I know there's a lot of people right now who's like, oh, no, <laughs> not Sergio. Come on, man, Serge. <laughs> yeah, Serge. You know what? Serge did this past week the same thing that Brooks did last year before he came in and had a chance to win. So I'm not saying there's a little karma there. I'm just saying there's a little karma there. Sergio Garcia is the long shot. I, I love it. Giving us Sergio saying Rory is a legit contender when no one's talking about him. By the way, a third last time out for Rory McIlroy. His game in good shape. I tell you whose game is in phenomenal shape. It's the caddy. Michael Collins with us all week long, breaking down the 88th Masters. Thank you for joining us, Caddy. Enjoy the golf this week. Oh, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I can't wait. Everybody, just grab a comfy chair and hope <laughs> that we get that Sunday we all been dreaming of. That's the plan, Caddy. And after hearing you talk about Rory, this is why I got you on my bag. I'm going to anchor my daily fantasy lineup with McElroy. He's finished, as you saw on the graphic there, top 10 in seven of his last 10 starts at Augusta. The emotional and mental baggage has been shed. He is ready to rock and roll. Should have a lower percentage ownership in tournaments than Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm, so some leverage there. The rest of my lineup looking this way. I agree with Aaron. I like Hideki Matsuyama, form, course, history. It's all there. Dustin Johnson I mentioned earlier, five top 10s at Augusta, including a 2020 win. Matthew Fitzpatrick, he's 35 to 1 at ESPN Bet. That's shorter betting odds than 12 golfers priced above him. I think he's a great value in the 7,000s. Mickelson, you know I'm going to lefty. And Bubba Watson who has made 13 of 15 cuts at Augusta. Don't forget about the two-time Masters champ just because he has been playing on the Live Tour.